everybody. So this is going to be a review, an in-depth review with kind of a question and answer um, section with me and Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics. I will link him down below. If you haven't checked his channel out yet, he reads a lot of really cool stuff. He's got me kind of turned on to um, William Faulkner. It's one of his favorite authors. And um, really just enjoy his opinions. He's out in Oregon. And so what we did is we sent each other some questions and then we're going to go ahead and answer them. So I, um, he accuses me of stealing a library book, but I actually got it from Thrift Books. If you guys ever bought Thrift Books stuff, um, they kind of get old library copies. But I uh, wanted to defend myself there, right? The, um, but I'll go ahead and go into his question, uh, his question one real quick. Hey, y'all. Good morning here. Good morning in Portland. Just waking up, 6 a.m. Ramsey and I are finally going to conquer this Philip K. Dick book with a <laughs> an attempt at a review, a video review, question and answer. Ramsey, this is Ramsey's book, by the way. He hocked it from the library up in Atlanta. Now, if you look for Ramsey in Atlanta, you won't find him. Yeah, he's close by there. But I think he's in Green, Green for, Folk. It, so we're going to uh, attempt this. And his first question to me was, did I know that the main character, Horse Lover Fat, in Dallas was actually Philip K. Dick, a split personality, uh, no uh, ifs, ands, or buts, because they're reunited at the end, the personalities. And no, I did not know. He, uh, he pulled it off. You know, this is a Philip K. Dick novel supreme. I've always wanted to read it because it was Robert Anton Wilson's favorite novel, or one of them. I met Wilson. He was part of our Finnegan's Wake group in Tempe, Arizona the late 90s and it's no surprise because uh, uh, Robert Anton Wilson in his uh, book uh, Schopenhauer's Cat is mentioned in here but that's uh, question three from Ramsey all right so this will be um, his first question to me and he sent it to me on Voxer um, we've been talking back and forth and so what I'll do is I'll play it for you so you can hear uh, him and then I'll go ahead and answer it I think one of my questions to you that I would like to hear is, uh, do you think uh, Philip K. Dick or Horst Lippervat uh, becomes a Christian in the end? You know, at first he's more like into uh, Taoism and, you know, everything else and all the, you know, the, the laid back hippie stuff, California wave, tasty wave and a cool bud type thing. But that's one question. Do you think he's a, a Christian now? So for me, I would say no, because I believe that there's really three things you have to do. You have to ask forgiveness for your sins. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you have to you have to choose to follow Him, which in the book he doesn't do. Um, he has a spirituality, but I don't think he ever makes the step where he. Um, learns to be a Christ follower. And part of that is because he at one point says um, that Jesus was just a reincarnation of Elijah and that there have been five great prophets throughout time and that I, I can't remember exactly or not. Um, Alan has my book, but um, I believe he equates um, Muhammad as one of those. Um, I believe he equates... Buddha is one of those. Um, and for me personally, there is literal scripture in the Bible that says the only way to the Father is through Jesus. You know, he says it. He says the only way to the Father is through me. Um, so I believe that that is the case. Um, so no, I, I, I never saw a moment where Horse Lover Fat actually followed Jesus. I think he talked about at some points the um, first century Christians um, and, you know, the, the iron cell and the iron cage um, kind of when they were going through their persecution. So I think he commiserated with them and kind of felt a kinship to those people, but I don't think he ever became a Christian. All right, so we will go into Alan's second question. I'll send you over to him right now. Hey, 
Mine like parachute. Only work when open. Question two is a good one. And it's about, um, while reading this book, Ballas, I, of course, I, I, there's a great documentary on Philip K. Dick on YouTube. And the question is about, uh, in this book, the character Horse Lover Fat is, uh, he gets a, a pink laser to the head and it, it, it uh, causes him to come up with this exegesis, which is, and it's peppered throughout the book, but it's in its entirety it's at the end. And it's Philip K's dick theory of uh, God. You know, it's what an exegesis is. But back to the question. In watching the documentaries, it is a known fact that Philip K. Dick, the person, had this experience with the pink laser in reality and diagnosed his uh, son's, his son had some uh, internal problems, intestine problems. Dick diagnosed that and saved his son's life. And the question is, and then he incorporates it in this novel, which is half truth and half fiction is a see, it's a um heck of a read it's a knockout book so how did you know it made me feel like um i'm part of something you know the old uh, adage we're not human beings having a spiritual experience here on earth we're spiritual beings having a human experience. That's Dr. Wayne Dyer. All right, so this will be Alan's second question to me. Hopefully the first one came through all right. Well, then another question of mine would be at the end with that uh, small girl who they think is uh, Jesus or just another, uh, you know, I have the book and I have your, uh, your bookmarks there too, so I'll be able to... <laughs> for the last questions off, off those. What about, I mean, it's just such a triple book and it's hard to explicate, isn't it? I'm gonna use that word a lot, I would you explicate. It's hard to figure out. He, he talks about, so there's a movie and the way that Philip, that Philip K. Dick did this is, you know, there, there's the pink laser. And so Philip K. Dick in real life has some teenage kids had created a homemade laser back in, I'm, I'm guessing the 70s, and he got hit in the face with it. And supposedly he got this information. Well, in the movie, it's a satellite. So he goes to see this movie, and this movie is exactly the things that he's been told and that he's been doing. And so you're supposed to get this relevant information where all of a sudden the pink laser that these kids created at home hit him, hits him in the head, and he learns all these things. And then through some perceived beaming of information into his brain, we're supposed to interpret that Valis, uh, I've got to look up the acronym, I'll put it down here when when I can, but it, it, it's the idea of Valis was talking to him and um, through, but it, it, I don't know, there's like another laser that they use later on so he goes and he meets what i'm assuming is supposed to be david bowie and his wife and then uh their producer and their two-year-old daughter and the daughter is supposed to be the miraculously conceived thought project child of the vast intelligent satellite and through the woman and the two-year-old child is up and speaking to them and um i understand it's not real it, it's it's where he really ties in the sci-fi element to it but the idea that i don't know maybe i have a hard time conceptualizing the idea of christ as a prophet that comes again and again and again what would be the distinctive purpose of that prophet um one of the big things that i have trouble with when we talk about religion and we talk about um you know okay well you know i don't believe in christ but i do believe he was a good man and something c.s lewis pointed out that really has stuck with me is the idea of if 
we didn't have this thought of that he probably is a prophet, um, everyone would believe he was crazy. If someone came today and said and did the things Jesus did, there's two options. He's either God, who he says he is, or he is a crazy man who deserves to be put in a sanitarium. And, you know, most people nowadays would put him in that sanitarium. They wouldn't believe him. And it's it's understandable to think that these people took him as just this psychopath, right? Like, they, they didn't believe what he was about. He did, They didn't believe what he was standing for. Um, and they killed him. They literally killed him because of what they perceived he was. And so for me, it's really hard to come across this idea of, oh yeah, Jesus is just a good man. Jesus is a um, great prophet or a great teacher or a great leader. No, he was either crazy or he was God. He's not one of these these things that we, we try to pretend he is um, when we do like a halfway measure of is he God or is he not. Um, and so to have a fully formed child at two with a fully formed brain in the same continual brain that Elijah and Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad and she's the fifth prophet um, I don't know I found it interesting but a little bit weird and she does this thing where we've we've gone the whole book and Philip K. Dick is a character and Horse Lover Fat is a character but in Old English um, Philip is the term for horse lover and so philip and horse lover are the same and um fat i don't know he may have been doing an innuendo there with his last name but um so horse lover fat and philip Dick are the same person and it's it, when she points this out to him they immediately come together and i think that really had me interested and it really had me interested because the producer of the people who was beaming lasers into one another he was continually beaming himself and giving himself cancer so he he goes and at the end of the book this is a huge spoiler i'm sorry but he's beaming himself and so he's got bad cancer he's been beaming the wife of who is not but is uh david bowie um and impregnating her with a laser and he's he shoots the laser at the two-year-old girl who's supposed to be the prophet and kills her as well. So for me, I was just like, either I don't understand it and I'm not open-minded enough to understand it, or it was so far past my level of understanding that I just, I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. The whole the whole scene with the girl kind of threw me off a little bit. And, and it was one of those things where it was like, she knew that they were crazy but she was still supposed to be the fifth prophet. And then they killed her. Like, they legitimately shot her with radiation and killed a two-year-old girl. And she's telling Philip K. Dick, Horse Lover Fat, and Kevin, um, and another guy, Dave, who is a Christian, you know, hey, you know, you have to, um, you, ha you have to get not tell them what I told you, and you have to get away from me. And you have, it. like, it, it was just, it was a bit nuts. So we'll, we'll go back to Alan on the third question that I asked him. Let him answer that and we'll be right back. Okay, the uh, final and third question. What did I think about Kevin's dead cat in Vallis? <clears throat> it's pretty pessimistic uh, ending and it doesn't really end there. This is uh, the book that like it keeps going and going and going. We're talking about horse lover fat, or and or Philip K. Dick, can, referring to a dead cat as a symbol of life. You know, life is uh, just uh, you might as well just go out and party and get laid because you're just going to be a dead cat. You know, you're going to cross the road, something's going to hit you that uh, you weren't looking out for, and that's it. Now, I don't believe that. And I don't believe that Horse Lover Fat believes that either because he's still going on to pursue the Savior. In fact, he says he's going to search for him in India. Um, 
and then they go on to talk about Linda Ronstead and um, oh he gets a he gets a cipher from Portland Oregon too uh, what a book what a book is there life after death I uh, certainly hope so so it was a good buddy read difficult book I'll be thinking about this book forever might reread it might reread or might read the uh, the next book in the series and then there's a third but I really do want to read the man in the high tower I think I'll read that Philip K Dick novel next so thanks Ramsey I enjoyed it uh, until next time See you later, man. I guess, like, one of my questions, or the last one, if you can fit it in, is uh, what did you think about the movie Dallas? I mean, the, the novel really took a, a turn for the weird there, too, when he, uh, he got corroboration that the laser and all that. So um, I'm going to record my answer to your question about Kevin's cat and uh, so you know the first girl to kill herself was Gloria then we had uh, Sherry and then we have uh, the, the Messiah at the end the little girl whose name eludes me right now it's 3 a.m. in Portland I'm going back to my hotel the movie I, I kind of went into that in the last question so the the movie was supposedly a thought project which philip k dick and his real life friend which i think his name was also kevin um kevin basically he carried around a dead cat and it was the idea of um if i have this dead cat and what does this dead cat affect and and kevin actually asks the little girl when he meets her about his dead cat she's like well you're kind of onto something there kevin um way to way to carry around a dead cat um, and so this is a, a trilogy, right? And supposedly they're not as connected as they can be and interlaced through the whole thing. Philip K. Dick lays out his exogesis, which before I got on booktube, I had no idea what exogesis was. Um, from what I've come to understand, it's like someone's personal, um, religious testimony where they find what's important to them and write it down and kind of give their personal and they give their personal theology doctrine kind of thing and so the movie was their favorite movie and i'll look it up one more time and i'll put it down here um because i i should write things down but i'm in the truck um kind of had a had a moment and uh as he goes to this movie it's based on their favorite movie that they watched I think I think the article I read said 20 to 30 times like they went because back in the 70s it was you know theaters you had to go to the theaters to watch the movie and they would go like every couple of days they'd go to see this movie and so it affected him in a way where a lot of his ideas about what Vallis was and that's what they ended up naming the, the story on because he enjoyed the movie so much um, was things that came from that that movie and that movie was pretty trippy and pretty crazy um, it was had David Bowie in it. That's why that character is based on David Bowie. And I think it's just really interesting and fun to see the way that he tied something he enjoyed so much into his stories. Um, and, and I, th that was probably when I read that article, it was the most interesting thing that I found. I actually, I think the art, I found the article because I was like, is Vallis a real movie? Um, and it's like, no, Vallis is not a real movie, but this is the thing that Vallis is, you know, whatever. Um, so it was, it was a lot of, um, it was probably my favorite part of the story because you get Philip K. Dick and he's like freaking out and Kevin's freaking out and they're like, oh my gosh, all this is interconnected and it works and it's, it's this and that. And I think, uh, it was an experience to read this book. It really, really, really was. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry that Alan's book got stolen. It would be a lot easier for me to, um, go through my notes and kind of show you. I took a ton of notes. Um, and so I sent them to him and I hope that it, 
enhanced his reading experience and got gave him um because i know he's he is a practicing buddhist and i'm a practicing christian so so the different looks at religion and the different looks at what um interpretations of religion are is, is fun it's interesting i really enjoy trying to find out what um people are into and they're the whole early christian idea where he had this idea of um time is this weird construct where now and the first century were interspaced and kind of laid apart on top of one another so the early christians who were being oppressed by the romans and the 1970s became the same time and philip k dick was used for that interesting moment um I'm assuming drugs were involved somehow, um, but but yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. It's interesting. It's it's one of those where you it makes you think on, on a level that you hadn't really thought of before, and so I'm really interested to um, like like Alan said. I don't can't remember if he said it in this video or another video. Man in the High Castle is one that I really want to get to. I enjoyed Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep immensely. I was emotionally invested in that one. Valus, on the other hand, I felt like an idiot, and or I just didn't get it. I, I I had a moment where it was tough. Like there were plenty of times where if I was not doing this as a buddy read with Alan, I would have put the book down and never finished it. But I'm glad I finished it. Um, I, I think I wrote on Goodreads that I gave it three stars, and it, just because it's so difficult to understand, it's one of those where you could probably break it down and understand it the way that he wanted you to understand it and you could probably like watch some documentary stuff on him which alan watched and i intend to watch eventually i've just been crazy busy lately um where he actually does interviews and stuff like that kind of describes what he was going through what what was going on in his mind at the time so let me know have you read it are you feeling like read it i know my buddy um noah at everyone read that must converse loves it I, he thinks it's a great book so don't just take my opinion on it um and he may have even reviewed it on his channel i'll have to check that out if he did i'll link it down below i'll just link his channel down below and you can check him out because he's awesome um and i'll check you guys out next time uh make sure you go um check out alan uh, i'll have his channel linked down below as well please subscribe and we'll see you next time bye